Welcome to The Sane Show. Get ready to eat more and exercise less to burn a whole lot of fat and radically improve your health. Hey, everybody. Jonathan Baylor back with another Sane Show. And today's show is... uh, going to be one that is is for the record books i think it is it is a story that has touched not only my heart but the heart now of of thousands of people around the world the more that i'm learning about it and i'm so honored to have today's guest with us he is a he's sane he's an extremely sane <laughs> man and his his sane success story is is basically unparalleled so Kyle Wong welcome to the show brother Thank you very much. I'm, it's an honor, actually. Well, Kyle, let me, let me give the audience a quick bit of context here. And I was, I was so happy last week to have an email you sent to my associate, Nicole, forwarded to me just with these kind words of gratitude and then a link to an amazing story about you and the incredible transformation you've experienced over the past years and even more incredible the reasons why you did that and what you're doing with it now. Can you share this story with us? Sure, sure. Um, I might embarrass you a little bit today, so just be prepared for that. uh, (laughs) All right, well, look, let me start at the beginning. Um, So I've been pretty much overweight for almost all of my adult life. And um, I think... Like so many others, um, I've tried to lose weight so many times before with varying degrees of just failure. And I think that I had gotten to a point to where I think I had just lost all hope. You know, I had given up and um, I was resigned. And I was resigned for a long time, Jonathan. I just was living a half-life of not really living, not really dead, you know? And, you know, I just thought that this was my life and I'm just going to have to deal with being fat for the rest of my life. So I continued on with that until about a few years ago and a few things happened. And, you know, every, everybody knows that bad things come in three. So let's just start off with one Um, My insurance changed, and they uh, required me to take a physical to, you know, uh, to to insure me. And so I had to go to the doctor, and I had to weigh myself for the first time in years. And so I uh, remember getting up on the scale, and uh, the nurse just uh, quietly clicked uh, 278 pounds. Right. And um, if that wasn't a shock enough for me, when I got home, I had found out that um, my insurance wouldn't cover me because I was too heavy. Mm. So um, that was strike one. And then at around the same time, I was having some difficulty because I was falling asleep all the time. And my doctor kind of had uh, thought maybe you have sleep apnea. So he wanted to have me checked out. So he sent me to a sleep center, and they hooked me full of like 30 wires and electrodes and just said, okay, now that you have all these wires attached to your body, go to sleep. (laughs) I'm like, okay, (laughs) thank you. And um, so I did that, and I went into the sleep specialist in the morning and, uh, and said, so how did I do? And he was kind of in a panic. He was uh, say, okay, I got to get you a CPAP machine. I put a rush order on it. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what is the deal? And he's like, okay, well, you definitely have CPAP. I'm like, okay, is there a score? Is there, you know, <laughs> something that I can hold on to here? He's like, well, let's say that a score from 1 to 15 is mild sleep apnea. And anything from 15 to 30 is you definitely have it. And anything over 30 is not good. Right? I'm like, okay, cool. So what did I score? He goes, you scored 112. Wow. So what that means is within one hour's time, I stopped breathing 112 times. Hmm. So, um, so yeah, so that's wake up call two. And honestly, um, not long after that, my father passed away and, uh, 
he was always concerned about my health, and but he was overweight himself, had heart disease, um, and he had his first heart attack at the age of 55. And currently, I'm 47, so that's eight years away. Mm. Um, and I remember driving my dad to uh, to the hospital um, right before he passed. And the last conversations that I had with him was that I promised him that I would fix my health, right? And it wasn't just for me. It was for my kids, right? And, um, and so, yeah, so <laughs> there you go. That's the, that's the first part of my story. Kyle, that is, it's such a powerful story. And we've, we've now set the stage for what sounds like a, a breaking point. Is that, is that fair to say you, you basically, despite, I mean, you, you, it sounds like for decades you were dealing with this, you have, you had become resigned to this as, as quote unquote, your reality. This is just the hand you've been dealt. What was, what was it in your brain that, that made you say like, no more? <laughs> Yeah, well, okay, so even though I had all the motivation in the world to change, that doesn't mean that I knew how. So for the next better part of the year, I just got my hands on all the information that I could on health and and weight loss, right? But as I started to go through the articles and books and what I could find on the internet, I mean, I know that you know this. I found that almost everything that I could find was like opinion, right? And conjecture and just, you know, one person's, you know, diet method, right? And I was on a mission to find out what was true and what wasn't true, right? And so I'm going to talk about you a little bit here. That is what led me to your book. Right? I remember Googling around and fumbling through Amazon and um, and I ran into your book, and um, at the time, it was, it was the smarter science of slim, not the calorie myth. And conveniently, on the cover of your book, it says, in bold, scientific proof, fat loss facts, <laughs> right? And, and that's what I was looking for, right? I, I didn't want any more opinion, right? I needed to find out what the facts were. So... Even though the guy on the cover looked a little bit geeky, I bought the book <laughs> and never looked back, right? And so, um, you know, I, I believe that two of the main reasons that weight loss is so difficult for people is that people just don't have the right information. And two is even if they don't have – even if they do have the right information, they just don't believe that they can succeed, So many end up not even trying. So for me, your book actually removed both of those stumbling blocks. And let me tell you why. Um, I'm excited about this because I I sometimes get to tell my story to my friends, but I never get to talk in specifics, especially to the person who uh, made a big difference. Okay, so let me tell you this. So I remember reading through your book. And earlier, early on in the book, you start to explain the concept of a clogged sink representing your broken metabolism. Jonathan, this right here, this one concept was the absolute magic for me. For years, I believed that I was fat because I ate too much. I believed this, that I worked out too little and that it was my fault But here you were telling me that it's not the quantity of food and it's not the quantity of exercise. Kyle, your sink is clogged. Your metabolism is broken. That is the reason why you are fat. And so, you know, I know that you're all about the science, right? And um, and, and explaining the facts. But for me, this, this one part, this one concept was so motivational to me because, you know, what this means is that I don't have to blame myself anymore. I don't have to hate myself anymore for failing over and over again, right? And finally, somebody validated for me that, you know what, maybe I'm not lazy and maybe I don't just lack willpower, 
or didn't try hard enough, right? Jonathan, I, I, you know, I, I'm here to thank you because this one concept set me free and gave me hope, right? And it gave me the spark of belief that I needed to take this journey on, right? And ah, I just can't thank you enough for that. Kyle, I, the, the feeling is certainly mutual in terms of thanks. I'm sitting here, I be being very transparent, I had a little bit of a tough morning. We've got some, we've got some uh, pretty technical uh, issues we're dealing with here. And uh, I was like, oh man, I got to gotta get on this call right now. And I got to talk, talk to Kyle, which I was looking forward to doing. But I just got to tell you, man, hearing, hearing this, hearing your story, hearing these results reminds me why we're all here and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I thank you uh, as deeply as you are thanking me. And, and Kyle, I so appreciate that you brought up that, that one concept of the clogged sink because I, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it, it gave me hope, which is ironic for us to be talking about because we're both, you know, you said you were looking for the science. I'm Mr. Science. But at the end of the day, the thing that made it sounds like the, the straw that broke the camel's back. I don't like that analogy. Maybe the, uh, the, the spark that lit the fire inside, that's a better one, mm-hmm. was, was this restoration of hope. And once you had that hope, once it sounds like once you knew that there is this, it, I mean, and, so, and let's be very clear, I, I could imagine that it, it can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, hearing that, quote unquote, your metabolism is broken could be perceived as like, this, oh my gosh, like I have a disease. Oh my goodness, what's going on? But it sounds like you didn't take it that way. You took it the way I, I hope you one would take it, which is, look, this is broken, but we can fix it. And once it's fixed, things are going to be forever different. No, exactly. I mean, that is what I do. You know, I, I sometimes explain it as, you know, um, your being fat or you being overweight is not really the problem. It is only the symptom of the problem, mm-hmm. right? And you know what? You don't – I sure, I can take cough drops, right? And it can help me, you know, cough less and attack the symptom. Or I can get my health right, right, and attack the cold. I can attack the underlying reason. And then you know what? I won't be coughing anymore. And in my case, you know, I won't have the medical issues that I've had and the, you know, the, the problems with being overweight like I did because I approached it by not focusing on trying to lose weight. I focused on gaining health and it was just a huge difference for me. That is, that is the key distinction, Kyle. I, I find personally this, this, amazing irony when you look at the quote unquote weight loss arena it is sometimes considered the most vain of of pursuits someone mm-hmm. can go after but what what you're saying and and what i'm saying is that your your weight or let's say more specifically the amount of fat you have on your body is really an indication of the health of the underlying system and that's of course not always true someone could be anorexic or bulimic and have very little fat on their body, and the system itself is very unhealthy. <laughs> right, 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 right. We understand the the general point. And so, what steps did you take then to heal that underlying system, which then would address the the more visceral uh, body fat and and sleep apnea issues? Right. Well, I mean, for one, it 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 it, it starts with that spark of belief, and and really. Um, it was the attitude that I started off with, right? So my philosophy, um, once I, 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 you know, I, I gathered the information and I, I read that one concept of, of yours with the broken metabolism, I, you know, my philosophy is if I just focus on optimal health and wellness, then any of the problems that I have will eventually resolve themselves, including weight loss, Right. So I don't focus on, you know, getting smaller. Right. So I I, I didn't diet. I didn't cut calories or portion control anything. I just ate the foods and did the things that would build my body up. 
make my body stronger, better, and healthier. And as I did that, right, you know, as you explained, my body did start to heal and my body started to work again like it used to. And as I got healthier, okay, this sounds too good to be true, but (laughs) as I got healthier, the weight just seemed to come off without really a whole lot of effort on my part. And I, and I don't mean that to be, you know, like I'm diminishing the struggle because I've been there. I know it. Right. But I just don't want to project that I'm an anomaly or I'm, I'm special in any way. You know, I really believe that good health is achievable for anybody. I really do, you know, and I believe that it should be simple and uncomplicated. Right. And so, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I did. I did change things. Right. I, you know, I absolutely changed the quality of what I ate, but I never changed the quantity. Right. I, I, you're famous for eating a ton, I hear. So, <laughs> you know, I eat a ton, too. Right. I never cut back. I eat when I'm hungry. I stop when I'm full. It's this is not rocket science here. Right. You know, As long as I'm eating quality, real, whole, unprocessed foods, my body knows how to handle that, right? And so I just really believe, Jonathan, that, you know, a healthy body can, can, can manage itself, right? You know, you talk about a homeostasis all the time, but a body knows how to, you know, metabolize, you know, uh, you know, an apple or kale or spinach or, you know, grass fed beef or things that are real that we recognize as food. Right. And so I just focus on the big rocks, those things, right. The minutia and the acai berries and the (laughs) supplementations, you know, I, you know, I think those are good hacks on time to time, you know, that might help you. But, you know, if we just focus on the big rocks, right, and focus on taking care of our body, sometimes it's just as simple as take care of your body and your body will take care of you. I mean, really, it it really comes down to that simple sometimes, doesn't it? It, What absolutely does, Kyle, and you provide such compelling evidence for that. Can you tell us, so at the beginning of the story, you told us, (laughs) where your starting point was and now we're at a you're in a state where you your body is taking care of you so what is life like now i am embarrassed to say it is amazingly simple and easy um you know everyone i don't even know what the word maintenance is to be honest um i my whole deal was to create a healthy lifestyle that I'm excited about living. And so that's what I do. I, I, I don't struggle. Everyone tells me, it's like, um, you know, losing weight is hard and keeping it off is even harder. Um, I've kept this. Uh, so I started at 278. Um, I'm currently 164. That's 114 pounds. Um, and I think I hit that number maybe about two years ago and, uh, I weighed myself, uh, I don't know, uh, a couple of days ago and I think I was 165. Um, and so I don't really even think about it. You know, I take care of my body. You know, I do, I eat the foods that my body needs and understands Right. I, I, I make sure that I get enough sleep. You know, I, I make sure that um, I uh, do some eccentric exercise. And, and can I talk about exercise a little bit? I didn't trust you right away, <laughs> by the way. Um, in the throes of exercise, um, at one point, I was doing a crazy an hour and a half a day and um, of extreme videos that I won't talk about. And, um, and it took me a while and it took a leap of faith to dial it down and stop forcing my body into submission. Right. And, um, now I, uh, I exercise under an hour and a half a week. Um, I do, uh, you know, three sessions of 20 minutes of just weight training 
and I uh, adjust all those to um, you know eccentric style, so lowering weights. Um, and um, on Saturdays, I run races with my kids, which which is something that looks something like sprints. So we uh, do about four sprints every morning, and I give them a giant head start, and we run like the wind, and we race each other. And sometimes we'll, you know, put a little something on it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's that's play, really. So that almost doesn't even count. But yeah, so um, it's it's uh, once you get your body healthy and you get your body right, then. Um, that's that's when the magic happens, you know, and it's just really not that difficult to maintain, uh, a, you know, a, you know, a, a healthy body wants to maintain, you know, it's uh, it's vigor. I really believe that. Kyle, you mentioned uh, running races with your with your little ones. And what has what has the impact been on your family and those you love during this transition? Um, so I have three kids and um Two of them are bean poles, and one of them has uh, picked up a little bit of my genetics in that he picks up weight very easily. Um, and I'm so proud of him. His name is Nash, and uh, three he went on this journey with me, and I never weigh my kids. Um, however, you know, I only use the doctor's appointments once a year, and so three years ago, he was at the 90th percentile for weight. And the year after that, he was at the 80th percentile. And just this last year, um, we had him weighed at the doctor's office, and he came in at the 70th percentile for weight. And I am just over the moon about it. You know, this kid knows more about nutrition than anyone <laughs> at his school. I can guarantee it. Um, he he will read me the labels of food and, you know, the nutrition. And if he doesn't know what it is, like, Dad, what's riboflavin? <laughs> you know, he will, he will ask me. And so, you know what? He has come on this journey with me, and it has been a blast. You know, if I can say, you know, one thing regarding, you know, kids and getting their kids healthy, just have fun with it. You know, make it an adventure. You know, I think kids – can't really grasp the whole concept of health and this is for your own good. They, they just want to eat foods that they love and think are delicious. So you know what? It's your job as a parent to go and find those things, right? It's not just you know, your job to be involved. It's your job to set them up for success, right? So we went to the store. I don't know if uh, uh, you know, we went to the store and we, um, to, to the healthier store, I don't even know if I, I should mention names here. So, um, and we went and tried all sorts of different things and we bought, you know, grapes and carrots and different ranch dressings and this and that and different snacks. And, um, certain stores have a return policy to where you can return anything that you don't like just because you don't like it. So we, we went and bought a grocery bag full of stuff, took bites out of everything, and I kept the receipt, and, you know, I returned protein bars, and I had to return this and that and whatever with one bite out of it, and it didn't cost me a nickel, <laughs> right? And so, you know, when people talk about, well, trying healthy foods is expensive, it isn't, you know? Like, find some of these stores that have return policies, try all the different healthy foods that you can, Right. That's how I was able to set Nash up for success is I found healthy foods that he loves to eat. And at the end of the day, that's all he knows. Right. I get to eat foods that I love to eat and that I chose. Right. And uh, and it's it's been it's worked wonders. Kyle, that's a, a incredible advice and just icing on an incredible sane uh, coconut flour based cake that we <laughs> talked about here because uh, your story is is so inspirational. And I, I, I want to close. If there was one thing, so imagine you could talk to Kyle Wong of three or four years ago and you could say before. So before this journey 
and you could say one thing to him, what would you say? Wow. Um, okay. Well, people ask me for advice all the time. And what I usually tell people is, first, forget about trying to lose weight. Instead, find a healthy way of living that works for you, one that you enjoy and still allows you to enjoy all aspects of your life. And once you've done that, embrace it and live it fully. And that's, that's what I would tell myself, and that's what I tell anyone who asks me for advice. And Kyle, would you say that it's a fair characterization? I've, I've had such an honor to, to speak with individuals such as yourself over the, over, well, quite some time now. It's good. I'm getting old. And the, um, I, I get so passionate about this topic because when I hear your story, when I hear some stories like it, it's, it's almost, it's like a born again type story. It's as if you, the life you, and correct me if I'm over exaggerating, but it's, no, you're like not, the, you're not, the you're life not at all. you have right now like knowing what you know now living the way you're living now could you ever imagine could you ever imagine going back to the way you were prior to this no i would literally have to pick myself up and put me somewhere else you know i I, a lot of times i talk about you know you start with making changes right and those changes turn into habits but eventually It just becomes your nature, right? And I I talk often and a lot about I just can't even recognize that person anymore because my nature has changed, right? And so, and again, you know, I I realize the life that I have now, right? So, you know, I don't know if I even believe in weight loss per se anymore. I believe in living your best life possible, through optimal health and wellness. And Jonathan, I'm having too much fun. I just can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't give it up. I mean, you couldn't pry it out of my, my hands if you wanted to. <laughs> Kyle, this is, this is just brilliant. And wh- what's next for you on this journey to optimal wellness or continuing optimal wellness? Well, um, you know, as, in my article, um, I'm volunteering at the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles and um, I'm going to continue doing that. Um, I just have the honor to work with a lot of amazing kids. And the fact that they, they, they don't see how amazing they are yet, right? And they, for whatever the reason, whether it be obesity-related issues or just, you know, or what friends tell them or whatever else, you know what? These kids are amazing. And I... I'm really just called and I feel compelled to make sure that they believe that everything that they have, you know, is, is available to them. Right. And they have value right now. And so, um, so I'm going to continue working on with that. I would love to, you know, explore opportunities to work with adults as well and who, you know, are in similar situations. And I don't know, I'm trying to define my roles, you know, and I, I think a lot of times, You are about the science and explaining it, and you're so good at that. I'm starting to realize for me is I want to make sure that people believe that this is possible. Hmm. Kyle, I think there is a – it would be difficult to do a better job of that, put it that way, than what you're doing (laughs) right now. So I I thank you so much for that. And I do know that you have a blog. If folks do want to reach out to you, if they do want to stay uh, on track with your story, is there a place they can go to do Sure. Sure. I don't write a lot, but I do write a few things. Um, it's at nashdaddyrocks.blogspot.com. Um, you know, Nash is my son, and I'm his daddy, so it's nashdaddyrocks.blogspot.com. <laughs> well, Kyle, I so appreciate you sharing your time, your insight, and, and your heart and mind with us today. It is It is truly, truly inspirational, and I can tell you that you – you are being the change we all want to see in the world. And I deeply and honestly thank you for that. And I know that the listeners today thank you as well, because I can imagine that the inspiration that they will derive from your story will help to carry them through to reaching that 
that light at the end of the tunnel that now you are basking in and will never leave, which is just so fabulous. So I so appreciate that, Kyle. Thank you so much. Oh, not a problem. Thank you. Well, listeners, I hope you enjoyed this incredible story as much as I did. Again, our amazing guest is the unparalleled Kyle Wong, who through just living a healthy life and and treating himself the way he deserves to be treated, which is as a wonderful, brilliant human being that does not need to be starved into submission, has achieved a a success which is otherwise impossible. 114 pounds of quote-unquote weight loss was a a byproduct of a really a transformation and a metamorphosis into his best self. So just fabulous. And again, Kyle, all my thanks. Listeners, all my thanks. And remember, stay sane. Wait, wait, don't stop listening yet. If you like what you hear and you want more free goodness, be sure to hop over to SaneSolution.com and grab your free plan. Again, that's SaneSolution.com.